Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 100 of Let's Platinum and 100% The Evil Within. Alright, let's keep going. So, I'm just gonna quickly try and do this fast because it doesn't always work. So, Shade's already there. Oh shit, it's back. So, I'm gonna try and run directly to where I need to go. Pray that he doesn't. Oh, he saw me. Please I think I might be dead here. You've got to be oh, kidding oh. me. Nearly, nearly. Oh, damn, I should have gone. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't always work, so um, I was like, I'm going to try it and we'll see what happens. It is possible to get away from him there, it's just really, really difficult. Um, I tweaked the volume just a teensy bit more. Um, I think the last episode was pretty good. Um, I just increased the, the game audio the, the slightest bit. Alright, anyway, when you reload the save, oh, you, shit, I think back. you're already in the room before Shade even like pops in. Oh, it's about, it's about the same, you have a little bit more time. You've got to be kidding me. Anyway, you just gotta kind of like... Ugh. Okay, we should be fine now. Gotcha. Run away. Come on. <laughs> this music is so crazy. Oh god. Thank you for waiting. And Have go. A day. Oh, got it. <laughs> Alright, not too bad. Um, also, you want to stay kind of in a corner right now because uh, Shade is somehow going to appear on top of the elevator and her foot does some damage to us, so hopefully it doesn't hit me. Uh, uh, ah. Nice foot. <laughs> that butt. <laughs> Alright, anyway. <laughs> Uh, where are we going? This way, or this way. I actually forgot. I think it's back out the doors, but we'll find out. Oh yeah, it's, um, yeah, okay. So this part, um, is a little tricky, but I have a, like, a relatively good tactic to use. So in this room, there are several, um, of the cadavers, those guys who explode on contact. So what you want to do is you want to kind of, like, run over here, get that one's attention, run back, get that one's attention, and then run down here. And just let them kind of explode each other. Try not to be too close, run, oh god! Oh thank god, I don't know how I got away with that, oh come on. Get close, run. Run. That's bullcrap, that's bullcrap, get away! Okay. Alright, we're good. So, that was annoying, but um, essentially we've now cleared that room and there's no... Oh, look at the blood spatter on Kidman, that was so cool. Just to show you, there's like literally nothing else in this room. You can throw... Oh, I thought that glow, glow stick actually stayed up there. So what the game wants you to do is go through that way and then go to the right over there, but you can just go here. Is there another one? Oh, there is. Oops. I oh, shouldn't have hit it. I heard another one and I was like... Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing over there, so um, let's just open this. In fact, before we make a big mistake, I'm actually going to have a look in a book. Uh, yes, okay, that's it. Yeah, there's nothing there. Don't worry. Alright. Now, in this room, it's just a big circular room. I get, oh yeah, it's like the STEM terminal as well that she was talking about, like, below from the previous episode. I was a bit confused about what she was talking about, like, you know, why that was important. Okay, now we go here, and... Good, good news is, we're gonna get our flashlight back. What have you done to Robin? Show me! Keep your emotions out of this, Jimenez. He brought this upon himself. We gave him a chance. Where is he? If you really wish to know, he's in the next room. Come, see. Alright, let's get our flashlight back. Hooray! Glow stick becomes flashlight. And if we go over here into... where is it? I think it's on this side. In this sink? Is our first snail model. So there are five snail models for this um, for this DLC as well. As well, shade. Um, well, it doesn't say, but um, that's shade. So we can have a look at that when we finish. Uh, and I'm 
pretty sure that's it. So let's get out of here. I want to keep making sure because every time I just get so scared that I'm going to miss something. Okay, yeah, we're good. I know what's happening now. Now we're entering dissection. Very interesting. Uh, okay, there's a safe here. This one, uh, yeah, like the first one, uh, and I'm so glad they did this. It has different things to do. This one is pretty easy. You just got to match the blood patterns. Um, sometimes turning certain dials will turn the other dials, so be aware of that, like so. But because it only, like, the first one and the, well, the one at the top left and the one at the bottom go by themselves, and the one on the right affects the one at the bottom, so just do the one on the right first, I guess. But I think it's random, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work that way. Alright, let's go down. I want to get to a save couch, because I actually don't have enough time to finish this episode today. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's reveal another scene. This is despicable. What is this monstrosity? Despicable? Coming from the man using his own patience to further his own research? The irony of this situation is amusing. But even you must realize what we can do with this. This means STEM will run. We can continue the experiments. And your assistance is even more necessary than before. This whole project, from the beginning, it was about deceit. Yeah, so Rivik's brain was in there. Uh, his lungs are here. Um, his heart and uh, like a lot of other parts, stomach, colon, I think, intestines. Although, I probably should have said intestines only. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so they ran STEM like that. He, he, they dismembered him, literally. And, um, well, I guess I didn't need literally there, but anyway. Um, and they could run STEM without him, but, yeah, without him being alive. Okay, so this door has a code, right? And it's a bit tricky because there are, there's a whiteboard here, and then there are some symbols there. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go to the door and then aim from the door at the whiteboard and the wall and that creates your 4x4 four four pattern. So let's see, all four, top and bottom, bottom two, first and third. All four, top and bottom, first and third, bottom two? Nice. Couldn't remember the third one exactly. <laughs> that opens our door. Nice. Alright. This is, this was a bit of a, I think this was the scene that we saw a little bit of, um, in the I end of the first DLC. Him, and I am appalled. To think the young boy I mentored is now this. A mass of grey matter in a glorified test tube. Could they have been planning this all along? And what have I become in all of this? They've managed to keep his mind alive by simulating an artificial body. His consciousness is being confined to a metal straitjacket, a gear in their infernal machine. They have even stricken his name in humanity, referring to him by an anagram, Ruvik. A crude joke, as if spitting on his grave. I almost felt the urge to smash the case and end it right there. But my anger was quickly replaced by scientific curiosity. Reuben's legacy will live on. I will spearhead the next step. I will create something of my own out of this tragedy. Yeah, even at this point, he can't stop being a scientist. Now, here's something that I don't understand. It says, they have even stricken his name in humanity, referring to him by an anagram, Ruvik, a crude joke as if spitting on his grave. An anagram is a word that you can um, rearrange to create another word. There is no word that you can make with the letters R-U-V-I-K that makes any sense in this, in this situation. I've put it in an anagram solver, I've looked at all the different possibilities. There is no word that makes sense, at least not in English. Um, I think there was one that came up that was like curvy, K-U-R-V-I, which... Um, I think I'm thinking of cookery, probably, actually, like a sword. 
um, or short dagger or whatever, but I cannot figure out a word. I always thought that the reason he was called Rubik was because his first name was Ruben and his second name was Victoriano, even though it was with a C, and so he combined it and made himself Rubik. But apparently Mobius are the ones that called him Rubik. Um, as an anagram, uh, sorry, as an acronym, it might be a bit more. Like, you could come up with um, words to identify each letter. So R could be something, U could be something, V could be something and all that. Like, V could be, like, vitals, I guess, you know, because they're separating all of his parts. But as an anagram, I cannot see what, what that would mean. Um, what you see here yeah. is one of the first STEM prototypes. It requires a physical connection from user to host. But Beacon houses a newer version with a wireless transmitter. All the user hears is a high-pitched tone, and they're connected. We've gotten word Jimenez is prepping for unauthorized usage. We would like the trial run to be on our terms, not his. That sound in the patrol car must have been when Jimenez activated it. Joseph, Sebastian, Oscar... They were all pulled in with me. The stem and beacon. That's where it all started. There must be a way to get out of this world from there. So something I don't understand is like, if that high-pitched noise was what pulled us all in, right? Does, doesn't that mean that... Well, yeah. How does that work? Because... Hang on. So, Kidman was already in the nightmare at the beginning of the game. And then Sebastian, Oscar and Joseph got pulled in to the nightmare. So then what was like, but technically if they got pulled in, they weren't in to start off with. So they were in the real world. So how were Sebastian, Joseph and Oscar existing in the real world and Kidman also existing in the real world, but she was already in Rubik's world. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Cause then if they're in the real world, then they would have been connected to, to STEM at Beacon Hospital. This is what I don't understand and doesn't make sense to me. But, um, oh well, I think there's a cutscene here. No? Oh. There will be one soon. I've seen this room plenty of times. Oh, it's, I should have continued forward. I think the cutscene is here, actually. Yeah, it's here. Um, I was supposed to keep walking. And now, there's the couch. There are some things here that are to remain in the dark. Especially for you, kid. You're asking too many questions, ignoring your mission. Running from responsibility. Just like you always do. No, that's not true. You don't know me. That much is obvious. But we need to make sure you do what you're told. You're lying to me. Hiding things. I can't trust you. Not like this. You are not required to trust us. Only to obey. Alright. Um, okay, so, yeah, there's nothing else in this room, really. And I need to go for a bit. For you guys, it'll be a second. For me, it'll probably be about a day. So I'm going to quickly use this save couch. I don't know if, like, for example, I was going to quit and then just use the auto save, but I don't know if that would work. So I'm going to create a save here, if the game would let me. Thank you. 28, 28. And then, um, actually, I'll just pause it here, and then we'll continue. Oh, we'll continue in a second. So um, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Let's keep going. So, uh, there's the couch. That's where I saved. That's where I came from. This is where I'm going. It's been about 20 hours since that cut. Um, so let's keep going. Now, this next part, it's pretty easy. Like, when I say it's pretty easy, it's just literally we're going to be walking for a few minutes and nothing really to do. I love this section so much. It, it's got, like, it's so creepy and weird. It's like, the blood is falling upside down onto the, I guess, where Kidman was injected. Um, the theater is above us and, like, upside down. And then we have to climb down, but technically into the ceiling. Oh, man, it's so cool. It reminds me very much of, I think it's Silent Hill 2. I can't remember now because I haven't played that game in so long. But I think it's Silent Hill 2. There's, like, a really long ladder climb. Also, if you press um, circle, Kidman looks down and goes, like, nah, probably best not to jump. <laughs> Because in the main game, it's fine to survive really long falls, but this one is a, is too long. This fall is way too long. <laughs> Alright, we're going to get a cutscene here as well. So, here we go. You were assigned to your team for a reason. 
Castellanos, Oda, they know nothing. But they're searching for answers. Searching for us, you mean? One of us. But this may be our chance to remove them. Having all of you in one place will provide us with opportunities. Hmm. Castellanos and Oda are searching for one of us. I wonder what that could mean. In fact, now that I think about it, I'm pretty confident I know exactly what that means. But, uh, we won't, we won't find that out until a little bit later on. Now this is so cool. You climb down that really long ladder and you end up in the police station. Um, which is awesome. This is such a great part of the game. Alright, so prepare for a number of scenes. The police department. Why am I here? Alright, there's nothing over there. Don't worry about that vending machine, doesn't do anything. I love, I love this, like you can... Hey, look outside. It's just a less detailed version of where I'm going to be swinging a Spider-Man soon. <laughs> oh no, a timed joke. I can't use that. Because <laughs> people could be watching this a year or two or three from now. Um, there's nothing in those two rooms, so just ignore them. It's completely devoid of anything interesting. So let's go into the Crimson City Police Department main room. I'm sure they have a name for this area. I have heard it on like a lot of TV shows, but now I can't think of it. Um, okay, so we've got a little, lot of different missing and wanted posters around here. So missing, Christopher Taylor, Amelia White, there's a lost dog. I'm sure these are all pictures of, like, especially the dog is probably a picture of a developer's dog. Um, Fernando Cabrera, uh, Pedro Martin. Uh, this woman doesn't have a name, just says missing. Have you seen this woman? Yeah, really cool, actually. Don't really need the light. Now, something that is very odd to me. So, look at these tables, all right? Okay, you got the computers. More computers. Yeah, pretty, pretty average looking tables, right? Uh, yeah, uh, average looking table. Hey, wait, wait, what's this table right here? Sushi? Mount Fuji? Some, uh, ceremonial knives? Like, they, I don't think they're kunai, but I don't know the exact name. Hey, a glasses stand. Is that a Japanese lantern over there? This desk belongs to Joseph. <laughs> This is the most racist desk I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Why did they go out so far out of their way to say this is Joseph's desk? It was, it's so weird for them to to have um, done that. It, I don't know. I, it just seems so racist to me to put like, I mean, okay, if they had put glasses and like, I don't know, maybe just this sushi poster, I would have been like, okay, that's yeah, fair enough. Like that's a way to to define which whose desk it is. But one two, three, four, five, five different like elements and four of them are all of like an Asian descent, uh, all of Asian descent. That's crazy. And I almost forgot about this. So I was like looking for this. I was like, where is it? She's supposed to be in on, on Joseph's desk, but here's um, music track number two. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Let's just keep going. All right, we're going to get a cut scene here. What's this one here? Never seen that guy. This actually looks, this Fernando Cabrera looks like one of the haunted, um, early game like chapter two that little scene where we see the guy like uh have like what is it the barbed wire come out of him and like wrap wrap around him all right get ready get ready from there yeah, get ready for some cool scenes how's lily doing great everything's going fine just wish my wife would be home more to take care of her <laughs> look at his hairstyle she barely took maternity leave huh one of Crimson's finest, I suppose. She's a great cop in her own right, but we can manage without her for a little longer. You should hope she doesn't hear you say that. Oops. Or you'll be out in your ass, Joseph. This looks like it's way before I got here. Everyone's so much younger. But Sebastian's profile didn't say he was married. Let alone a child. I love the way she says that last line, let alone a child. She's like starting to realize that she's just being a brat her whole life and now she's paying for it. Alright, there's nothing in that room. Well, technically not nothing, but this is the room we want to enter first. So there's a safe immediately to our left here, but we need a code. And this is really cool. Hey, an interrogation room. That's awesome. TV, some chairs and stuff. Damn, I spoiled it. 
7, 8, uh, 7 to the right, 18 to the left, 11 to the right. Alright, let's do that. So, 7 to the left, 18 to the right, 11 to the left, I think it was. What is this, number 3, I think? Here we go. Yep. And... Yeah, number 3. Put that letter together at the end. That letter, like, I don't want to really talk about it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to really talk. I'll, I'll let it thing, because... Uh, oh, this... No, I'll, I'll try and remember to say it at the end. It's fine, it's fine. Alright, now this is cool. So you enter a hallway, and then immediately everything turns rainy. You know what? The, the graphics outside, obviously, you know, the developers didn't spend too long on crafting the graphics outside. But uh, the rain looks pretty good, and uh, I think for what they did, it actually, it's... Um, it's passable. Oh, what the hell? I, I don't even remember noticing that. That's so cool. Did she get wet? Giggity. <laughs> Alright, let's leave that. In we go. So, that weather will Seb, we make sense. Talk. Coming off with your conspiracy theories? You're getting out of control. You don't pull that in front of the captain. I'm onto something, Joseph. I don't need you hiding shit from me, too. I'm not, Sebastian. I'm trying to help. I want to help. But you need to think about this carefully. Your daughter. It was a loss. Everyone on the force felt. But your wife is... Myra left, Joseph. She left. When we needed each other the most, Myra left me. What would make her do that? I have to know. I don't care what it costs. His daughter, then his wife? One right after the other? No wonder he always seems so closed off. Coming from you. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's what Myra looks like. Myra Castellanos. Have you seen this woman? Circle, double X. Uh, okay, don't think there's anything in this room. Let me just make sure, because I know that there's like two things in the next room. Uh, yes, we're fine. We're fine. Um, okay, so yeah, let's continue. So the, the weather is just supposed to sort of signify that um, that was a, a really down moment in his life, I, I guess. And now it's sunny, so we get a more sunny disposition to their conversation. Julie Kidman? She barely has any experience. We hey, they're older now. Her. Send her out canvassing witnesses then. Let her see the streets. No. She's... she's coming with us. I'm going to train her. She's my responsibility. Look, I know you say it's personal, and I don't like to talk about it. But we can't have your misplaced guilt leading to rookies slowing us down. Sebastian... He and Joseph weren't supposed to be involved. It shouldn't have happened like this. I like how Joseph has a thing for Julie, but when they first started, Joseph was like, Nah, don't, don't, um... Don't bring her along. <laughs> Alright, let's collect two things. One, there's a snail right here. In the suitcase. And we get young Sebastian, whose face looks really screwed up there. <laughs> I think it's on purpose, but yeah. And we can get a recording. You've been on assignment for a week. How has it been? Observe and report, just like you ordered. It's surreal to be on the other side after all I've been through. Any signs of anything? Nothing yet. I'm not about to be caught snooping around the classified room while I'm still on probation, so I can't get what they have on us. Just earn their trust. That's all you can do now. It'll take a while, but in the end, they will let you in. I didn't know all these police officers were characters, though. I guess the tough, hard-boiled detective stereotype is still going strong. Our reports on Oda are that he doesn't let things slide, so be extra careful around him. Will do. Though I can't imagine us getting along well. And... Detective Castellanos. Anything you have to share on him? Seems drunk half the time. But at least he's considerate. Is he really the one people are concerned about? He seems almost harmless. He is... known to get emotional. Just make sure to give him his space. Respect him. As your superior. Okay, so we did. We do get a tiny bit of character development for Oda. Um, you know, 
Uh, our reports on Oda are that he doesn't let things slide, so be extra careful around him. It's not much, and then we get a little bit on Detective on uh, Sebastian, uh, what Kidman thinks of him, and what this agent apparently thinks of him. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Make make uh, make sure to remember that briefing for later. All right, here we go. That one, it feels like it didn't reveal much, but technically it does, and I only noticed it now, so... <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll come back to that at some point. Probably gonna end this episode in a few seconds here. Probably right after this cutscene. So we're done with the, uh, police station now. This is crimson. This can't be real. All right, Beacon. we gotta go to Beacon. I just hope I can get there before he does. Beacon, just like Joseph said. <laughs> All right, um, this is actually a pretty cool section because we're like outside, like properly outside. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do this next time. Let's have a look around. So we've got Crimson Theater, the Chapel, Cedar Hill. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll get uh, we'll get started on this next time. But for now, I want to thank you all very much for watching episode 100 of Let's Platinum and 100% The Evil Within. My name's Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and I'll see you next time.